Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Thank you for joining my channel. This will be a companion piece to my other podcast called A Foundation for Wellness. I'll touch on the breathing exercise real quick, just in case. You want to take a deep breath in through your nose, three to five seconds. Let it out through your mouth, five to eight seconds, slower than you took it in. Don't worry about the breathing problem you might have. It's the concept you want to get in through your nose, out through your mouth, slower than you took it in. This might be a good recommendation to check out my podcast, The Foundation for Wellness. It'll go into it into more detail, and it'll help with understanding some of the concepts I might describe coming up. So I use the construct for a very number of problems or issues I have, and even work, my creative endeavors. But for today, I want to focus on grief, loss, sorrow, and the issues we have with people we love, people close to us passing away. A lot of times I see on social media or in interactions with people, the impact it has on our bodies, our lives. So maybe this will help cope, let people cope with it, understand them themselves better, what's going on inside. So I call it the construct, and this will be used when you have time, space, to be comfortable, less distractions as possible, as little as possible. You want to be comfortable where you can close your eyes and relax. So you want to breathe, and on the out breath, let everything slip away. And you want to envision a place that you find comfortable, safe, beautiful. It could be a place you went hiking or a place you go camping. Some way you want to you envision your house being built or even an old home. Whatever the case may be, you can imagine a sunny day to grass under your feet. You can use this concept in a couple of ways where the sun beads down on you and it makes you feel sluggish and lethargic and in this way you could prepare uh, an exercise to help you with sleeping or you feel the sun beaming down on you and it invigorates you you feel the energy coursing through you here if you want to energize in any case you want to form a construct in this area it could be a cabin. For me, it's a medieval Lord of the Rings type castle or tower. It could be a home you envision, cabin. Here you can take a couple of different ways of getting into whatever issue that is bothering you, what are you trying to deal with. So if you had sleep issues, you might want to envision every step you take towards your construct makes you more tired and by the time you get to the construct get inside all you want to do is get to your bed let the day stress go so there are different techniques and I want people to explore this is not going to be a you do this you do that it's more of what helped me get through the tragedies in my life what I've struggled with since I was a young child and the recent tragedies that nearly destroyed me. I usually just appear now inside. I've been doing it for over 20 years, so I have a regimen that's quick and I'll try to break it down a little more, make it a little more easier. When I enter the construct, I have a big hall, usually medieval with a feast going on. To the left are all the family members that have passed away, who have impacted me greatly. 
who I've just known a little bit. And in the adjoining table to the right were all my friends that have left us on this journey. At this point, when I'm doing my own exercises, it's fairly quick and I'll maybe tell a brief synopsis in a couple of minutes. But for now, we're dealing with the loss of somebody. It could be sudden. And in some cases, it could be a long, drawn out issue or event. I've talked about it in my podcast, I Am I. When I was about 18, I had a friend commit suicide in front of me, less than two feet away, with a gun. That would be my sudden example. And recently, a fiance who struggled with cancer for 13 out of the 16 years we were together. So I know that aspect too. Or maybe if I thought about it logically, I'd say, I'd rather have a sudden death and loss than what I went through with my fiance. What it does to you over time and sickness and watching people wither away. But we have to get through it. We move on. These are the things that we have to go through and the challenges we face. So how do we accomplish this? This is just my experience, the things I've cobbled together. And like I said, it'll add on to my previous podcast. So you've entered your construct. You can greet the person you've lost. You want to breathe. Empty yourself. Come from a neutral position. And this is your buffer. This is your safe space. Where you're not susceptible to waves of emotions and thoughts you want to breathe and accept the truth you can have conversation with them the things you might have not said the things you did say it could be a relationship that didn't end well and that you never got to tell them how much you love them so on and so forth like i said this isn't a how-to it's something to add to your repertoire of tools to help you navigate life. I would want people to experiment. You want to take the negative feelings and thoughts. They will come. The sadness, the pain of moving on without them, the emptiness, all the expressions we as humans display. You want to bring it to a neutral Cleansing with a breath and you breathe out. It still take time. It's not easy. Sometimes it feels like you can do nothing but dwell on the pain, the anguish. But I recommend you try. Use the out breath to cleanse yourself and prepare yourself to feel happy with positive thoughts. Bring forth the moments that make you feel joy, the good times. Know that they're a part of you, that they shape you. The way we take in information, the way our brains work, they'll always be a part of you. Especially the people who are close to us, who in some ways raised us, aunts and grandmothers and parents. And it's your pain and loss. It's not theirs anymore. But be truthful. And I always say be truthful till it hurts. Express yourself and you don't have to hide from it. I think too many times we busy ourselves, try to keep, try to forget. And that's fine. Everybody's got their own way of dealing with things. But eventually I believe it's better to confront them. And in the construct, it's a way for you to do it and be in control. So you say what you need to say. You hug them. Try to bring them forth in vivid detail. I have some exercises I do with my grandfather on my mother's side. 
we get into a boxing stance and pretend we're going to punch and then hug. His wife, my grandmother on my mother's side, I've never met before. I only know her from one picture. But yet I express that in my construct and I tell her that I never got a chance to meet her. But that I'm happy she made my grandfather happy and my mother and my aunt are the mean so much to me. And on my father's side, my grandfather, the funny, the humor, the wit that is obviously my father and hopefully me. And my grandmother on my father's side, uh, the set jaw, the way she would tighten her lips and analyze you. Well, especially when you were talking and I used to do that in my late teens after my friend killed himself. I would come after work and sit there at the table, have discussions. I remember one time I asked her why we don't play backgammon no more. She used to love to play backgammon. It's a game you can look it out. And she was like, oh, we'll get it out and we'll play, thinking that I was mostly interested. But I was actually curious at what she was doing. And in hindsight, in talking to her, it wasn't something I think she did consciously. But as we broke out the backgammon board and put the pieces out, we just stared at each other. And I started laughing and smiling. And she was curious at why I was, I felt what I found so humorous. I had noticed that as I was learning about psychology and helping my mother and now dealing with my, the tragedy that happened, I explained to her what I was learning and what I was going through and that she used backgammon as a way to find out what was going on, what was bothering me. Anyway, getting to the construct, I use all these interactions in life and the Things that make us feel good and bad about our relatives and friends who have lost during this journey. Be truthful and experience them, but know you have a neutral position. You have a place to cleanse yourself before you go into the positive. You want to practice this? It's not easy. There's no cure, immediately cure. I think in time we can train ourselves to control these emotions. And I'm not saying to be immune, to not recognize the feelings we have, to ignore them, to take control of them, perhaps to transform them, mold them into something productive. We don't want to spend a good portion of our days and lives Worrying, going into depression, not being able to function. No matter what your beliefs are, it's not what they would want. And you could use that sort of logic. Whatever works for you to get through this painful time. Now I do this when the issues arise. And the hall gets bigger and bigger. The older I get, the more people I lose. And it just keeps getting crowded. But I take time to make sure I hug each one. And sometimes my own subconscious will focus on one or the other. And that's how I go to sleep every night. Using my exercises, I've trained myself to put a smile on my face. So every time my head hits the pillow, I smile involuntarily. It happens. I don't have to think about it. And then I enter my construct and I go through the stages rapidly. Like I said, I greet my family, my friends. Sometimes I have them mingle. If there's an event and it's a holiday. Sometimes when cousins announce marriages or New cousins are born and events happen. I bring them to the construct and introduce them to my family and friends. 
when when a new friend passes away and I deal with that pain myself, I make sure I mold it and be truthful with the negative emotions and thoughts. Cleanse myself with breathing exercises and maintain a calm and then focus on the positive. I believe we can train ourselves to handle these things better. And if you teach it as a exercise for kids in the stages that they grow up in, maybe it'll help them deal with these things. I wish I had someone listening to these podcasts when I was younger. The turmoil inside, how we withdraw, go deep into ourselves and close ourselves off. Here you create a construct to help you deal with that. And sometimes you can use it as a place to stay and isolate yourself. But it's also a place to confront life. Confront the issues we come across every day to be empathic towards other people who are going through this to become self-aware to learn how to go in deep and from a neutral position analyze the processes that are going on so i hope this helps somebody in anything that has to do with these types of exercises and concepts some people might get it easy some people might get it, it'll take longer to understand. But if you work at it, I believe it's a good exercise for the cognitive functions of the brain, the heuristics, to create a more productive life, even if it's little tiny fractions at a time. So it's my hope that this could help people embrace their feelings the tragedies that go on in their life. And just like my other podcast, it would be a precursor to understanding yourself, to knowing when I should get help, go to a professional, or when it's just time to take control of your emotions and figure things out. So I hope you understand where the pain comes from. I don't like some religious religious aspects that focus on dealing with it when you do pass away. So a heaven, so to speak, and you'll get to speak to them, and that's fine. But for me, the people in my life I've lost will always be a part of me. They shape me and formed who I am. And I create a construct for more than just grief, as I'll briefly explain. So as I go in and I greet my family and friends, I usually turn and they're on this dais that will eventually rise up in my tower to various floors for different purposes, is my fiance Michelle. This being one of the more recent, really deep uh, things that impacted me. I described in my other podcast um, without the support. I don't know if I'd be here still. In any case, I greet her. I express the feelings I'm having at the time. And I make sure I end it on a positive. And a funny thing happened a couple of months ago. Well, when Stan Lee died, as I turned to greet my fiance, Michelle, Stan Lee was there. And he's a big impact on my life. So, even celebrities and People we mourn and we haven't even known, but they've impacted our childhood or they've created art and work that we love, musicians and etc. I greeted him and expressed my thoughts and feelings on what was going on because the day he passed away, as the news came over social media, I was reading a Marvel comic. He was an editor. He wasn't writing a comic, but he had his little sections in it and I felt it deeply. So from now on, he's on the dais with me at this point in my construct. And as the dais rises and I express my 
feelings to my fiance. I sometimes bring other past loves into my life that were in my life into the construct. Sometimes it happens without me making an effort. And I express the love and impact they've had on my life. I never hold bad feelings against anybody, any past um, acquaintances or loves. And at a certain point, before I get to the floor, that I'm going to decide to make my construct the focus of, I prepare to say goodbye and let her go. For a time, Michelle would play superheroes with us, and she played a Green Lantern. So it's always usually the same thing. At some point, she turns into a Green Lantern. The outfit materializes on her. She opens a portal, and I accept that. I have to let her go, and she goes on another journey. She's got an adventure to go on. And this actually, over time, developed into Stan Lee doing the same thing with his wife. And I know it's me doing it. And she joins my fiance. And here is where my construct will branch off into other things. If I'm banging my head against the wall over something in the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, I might be in a classroom with a chalkboard or thinking about books I've read and drawing inspiration. It might be in a luxurious chair, something that makes me feel comfortable with the perfect lighting a book in my hand. Some might use it as a sleeping exercise and prepare themselves to get ready for bed. But for the most part, I go to the top floor where I have thousands of monitors and all my ideas and all my creative endeavors are put up on the screens. These days, Stanley says, let's get to work and I delve into different aspects of what's going on. If it's a science fiction script I'm writing, or I'm taking my novel and turning it into a TV show, or a comic book. All my ideas, all my passions, all the goals in life, I put on the screens and I work on them little by little. I don't obsess over one thing or another. But this is just another aspect of what I do with the construct. and how I think it'll be helpful for people. I hope in some way this helps and even if it doesn't, I am Addiction Master on Twitter, Joseph F. Olsis, Facebook, or just Joseph Olsis. My DMs are open on YouTube and comments. If this isn't helping but you think it might have uh, a part to play, I will gladly talk to you I have a Discord also. Maybe talk about expanding it or adapting it. There's a lot of people and friends I will help or have helped. It does take a little bit of adapting and understanding the person. I tried to do these with a general sense in mind for everybody. So if you need to contact me, feel free. I'm hoping that these exercises, if practiced, will improve people's lives, even if it's a fraction of a uh, fraction of a bit, an increment slowly, like anything. I want the issue with the stigma of mental illness to go away. We should treat it just like we treat people who go to a gym. The people want to train their mind and become better people. In any case, I hope you'll return. You know what to do, and don't forget to breathe.